Today, a very special guest joins me once again for the third time uh, in the show's history uh, because we're just over 100 episodes. <laughs> Mr. Rod Roddenberry, thanks for joining me again. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I actually, I kind of wish I were there because, I mean, as much as I like it here, I prefer it there much more. Now, I've got you on Skype today, which is a little bit different. Um, whereabouts are you? Are you in the office? Uh, I'm in a office. I'm in uh, Los Angeles near Santa Monica. I was out and about and asked to borrow a conference room um, and, uh, and Wi-Fi. Fantastic. So, uh, someone, someone help me out. To be, uh, to, to be back on the show. And, and I've got you back because you are where I got started. You were the very first interview that I recorded for the show. And, and I thought it would be a little bit fitting uh, as we just passed 100 episodes to bring you back and, and say good day once more. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. I, 100 episodes, that's no small feat. Which is really funny because uh, when I started it was 10 years of, of Trek Zone, which is the um, Star Trek fan site. So uh, I'll keep bringing you back for the milestones and I believe that there's a bit of a milestone for you as well with the Mission Log podcast. In well, terms I, of number of episodes. Yeah, well, I, I, to be honest, I don't know what number we're at. Are we, I, I know that we've, we've done all of the original series, all the animated series, um, all of the movies up to... Uh, oh, we've done all the movies up to the JJ stuff. We've done all seven seasons of Next Generation. Wow. And we've just wow. started Deep Space Nine. So maybe I should know what episode. Do you know what episode? I believe... Now, we are recording this a little bit earlier than, uh, than yeah. broadcast, but I think we were up to... You think you were up to about 240 episodes? Okay, well... Um, yeah, something along there. So what's, what's been the... Um, I know when we, when we first uh, spoke, um, you were excited to, to dive into uh, the Star Trek series because you hadn't really done that. Um, what's been the biggest takeaway for you with Mission Log? I'll tell you, I mean, there's a number of things. Um, so the animated series was a, a huge surprise with me because I, I totally, you know, I think a lot of fans do this, not all of you. I mean, but a lot of us, me included, totally dismissed the animated series because it just, the, the animation was so old school and so hokey and, and it just seemed just not Star Trek. Um, the truth is, if you sit down to watch it, it the stories, the caliber of stories are 100% are Star Trek. Um, and they, they even go into to big topics. This, this was made for kids on a Saturday morning, but they've got episodes that deal with the devil. And, and not to give too much away, but they, they kind of, they, they say the devil came from this myth, from this alien being from another planet that was, uh, that was, uh, it, uh, it was credited for doing mischief, but it was just misunderstood. And, and it's, it was a good story. And in the end, there's this understanding. It was very Star Trek where they find the alien there's a misunderstanding. They find out the alien's just protecting itself. I'm, I'm referring to Devil in the Dark. And in the end, you know, they're able to communicate and, and everyone's better for it. Um, so animated blew me away. Uh, highly recommend everyone check out the animated. Just suffer through the animation. <laughs> the stories are spectacular. The thing, um, the thing I really enjoyed with it was that it was nice and compact. Um, on one hand, it felt a little bit rushed, but it was it was a perfect length for continuing the Star Trek legacy for for when it was on air. Yeah, 22 minutes. Yeah, they they do compact a lot into 22 minutes. Um, and, so, and they also followed up a couple of original <laughs> series episodes as well with Harry Mudd returning and, and those pesky right. tribbles. <laughs> right, they did, they did. They, 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 you know, this was done by the people who knew and loved Star Trek. DC Fontana was a part of it. Of course, my father was a part of it. Um, uh, it, it was, it is Star Trek and I totally dismissed it and I, I was wrong for doing that and um, again, everyone should check it out. Um, but going through Next Generation again, seeing that with eyes, because I had watched it when I was... I guess 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, those, those ages, and you, I'm 44 now, so a lot of my perspectives on the world have probably evolved and changed. I certainly hope so, and I, hope so, and I, I certainly hope for the better. Um, looking at those episodes with this sort of new perspective, it actually just uh, encouraged my, my love of the next generation as, in my opinion, the ultimate Star Trek. And when I say the ultimate Star Trek, I'll, I'll, I'll further clarify it by the ultimate Roddenberry Star Trek, and I'll further clarify that by saying Roddenberry Star Trek is the ideal vision of the future where humanity works together for the greater good. You know, there's the conflict is not necessarily within ourselves. The conflict might be outside of ourselves, and, and we can handle it, and we can even handle conflict between ourselves, but we do it in a very 
respectful way. We are open, we're honest, we don't fear the difference between us. You've heard me rat and rave about all this stuff, but that that is the future I want to live in, more than Deep Space Nine, more than the original series, and maybe the animated series would be cool because there's lots of colors, but I don't think I could live there. It's interesting you mentioned that too, Rod, because that's exactly how I felt when I first uh, watched Next Gen. I was quite uh, quite a lot younger. Um, I'm 31 now. I, I did the rewatch for Trek Zone, and um, it, being older and having a different worldview gives you a better perspective on Next Gen, I think, and and it it really shines through, as you said, as the as the leading example of what uh, what the future should be, um, and and the way uh, Jean envisage the future yeah 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 no it's, it's i love it um ob obviously i love it and uh it's it's something that i carry on and, and we do it with our, our foundation in our, our own special way you know we try to find the organizations and institutions that are out there um working towards the long-term advancement of our species and we, we help fund a number of their projects so uh it's it's i i I long ago I realized that I'm not a Hollywood guy and by that I'm not patting myself on the back necessarily I'm just not I'm not good at it I'm not good at it in many ways um, and I'm, I'm very naive I want to believe what people are saying I want to believe when someone tells me something they mean it and and it's the same in any industry but you know Hollywood in particular people are just trying to claw their way to the top in many times not everywhere um, I, I'm just not that guy. So going into the world of philanthropy, I, I have the, I'm very fortunate. My parents left me uh, 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 the means to be able to do these sorts of things and to affect real change on the world. Granted, we're still a small foundation, relatively speaking, but you know, we are able to leverage our grants, our name and all that to hopefully inspire change and, and help fi uh, fund change in the real world. Anyhow, that was a little offshoot there. Well, it's it's so um, it's so noble, and I think that it's it's a fantastic continuation of of your dad's legacy in that he's created this world for all of these fans to get together. And I mean, I'm part of um, groups on Facebook talking about Star Trek with people from um, Europe and, and America, and, yeah. and my um, my friend circles are more online these days. But it's about that commonality of a hopeful vision for the future, and and that really was all it was all shame <laughs> yeah um, yeah and it's, it's easy to talk about but obviously it is a challenge right because mm. there's going to be people oh, you and me included and I, uh, maybe i shouldn't speak for you where we're going to disagree with someone else mm. and their idea is going to seem very contradictory to ours and i deal with this all the time and i'm constantly trying to challenge myself and say okay can you can you look at this in a different perspective can you understand it? can you can you kind of pat down those emotions yeah. You know, the, the reaction of wanting to burst out and say, you freaking idiot, you know, it, it, it's a challenge. Yeah, and, but and there has been... Have to do it. You know, there, there has. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but there is, there is, ha there has been some divisive topics, um, you know, in in the fan circles uh, over the last few years. But it really all boils down to a love of Star Trek, and and you can't, um, you can't quantify that. And everyone's love is going to be different, um, and or you know, appreciation. Um, and I think that you've got to have that appreciation to to understand what it means. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic, Rob. Well, thank you so much for joining me again today. Good luck with the rest of the Mission Log oh. podcast. I believe that you're um, you're heading into DS9 now, is that right? Yeah, we're, I think, 11 or 12 episodes in. So, And, and I'll say, you asked for a surprising thing, and forgive me if I'm running over time here, but I had not really watched uh, Deep Space Nine consecutively, and I've actually watched the entire first, and so I was very, I want to say very negative, but maybe like the animated series, I was somewhat dismissive just because Next Gen was my series. That was the show I grew up on. But I am really enjoying Deep Space Nine. Um, it, it, I, I think they did a great job, at least with the first season. I hear it gets better. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of uh, the seasons. I do want to ask you about that, actually, because, uh, yeah, it's... Um uh, just, just hearing your thoughts on, on next gen and, and the, the vision of the future and the way that uh, DS9 just came along with a whole bunch of grey pencils and sort of filled in all the, <laughs> all the lines. Um, so it's, it's, yeah. it's really great that, that, that you're enjoying it and, uh, and I can't wait to, um, to see you get through to the later episodes where it, uh, where it gets a little bit darker still. Um, but uh, but I, I, I do believe that there is the hope for humanity in DS9 still. Uh, I think that we're just I think out it's on the in there. And it, 
Yeah, and I'll, I'll say it's still Star Trek, but what I might say is it's not Roddenberry Star Trek, and that's fine. You know, I mean, that, it, that's just my 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 title and my way of, of, of referencing it. But uh, it's it's still a great show, and it still is Star Trek. And the legacy continues. Um, you know, the, the the show lives on. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic, Rod. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Thank you, everyone, and happy hundredth episode, guys.